there's been a lot of talk about uh, Oliver Anthony uh, and his his uh, um, incredible meteoric rise to stardom on his own terms. The fact that his uh, his song "Rich Men North of Richmond" became uh, a huge hit, uh, and he's he's raking in the cash right now, even though he has no made he has no label. Uh, He's a totally independent artist, um, but he still managed to spring out of nowhere and, again, just become this, this figure uh, that, that, uh, that fascinates people and, and, uh, and enthralls people. Um, and I wanted to look at or talk about something that I have observed from... Uh, the couple of times that I've seen him perform live, uh, uh, ne I've never actually been there to see him live, but the, the, the recordings of his live performances that I have seen, which he's given at these, at like these, um, you know, uh, out of the way type places, like some, some golf course somewhere in North Carolina, some farmer's market somewhere, I think also in, in North Carolina near where he lives. Um, you know, huge crowds come, come to see him, <clears throat> but, um, from what I gather, it's a free, uh, show, uh, and, you know, he, he, he doesn't really seem to have an interest in, you know, taking the, the typical route to stardom. As I said, he, he wants to, he wants to do it all on his own terms and he's had offers, you know, since ever since he, he, he got noticed a mere what was it? A couple of weeks ago, he's had offers from mainstream, um, uh, you know, country uh, venues, uh, record labels in Nashville, and he's turned them all down and said, "I, I don't. That's not the route I want to take. I want to do this my own way. Uh, I want to do this. I want to determine the, uh, the the manner in which I uh, um, manifest, as it were, uh, as." as a uh, singer songwriter. So there's a lot there that's very, very compelling about, about this guy, about his persona. Um, you know, in spite of the fact that when he, when he talks about himself, he's, he's always very humble and, and he's very eager to, uh, even to, to, to put himself down essentially to say, there's nothing really special about my music. It's not a great song. Uh, I don't claim that it's great or, or in any way, uh, but I think it speaks to people, you know, who, uh, who, who, uh, who need to hear these kinds of things. Um, so what interested me most, uh, as I was, and, and there, are, if you go on YouTube now, uh, you know, breakdowns of, uh, um, Oliver Anthony's rich men in Richmond, uh, Richmond, North of Richmond song are, are pretty much a dime a dozen. You know, you've got, <laughs> got a zillion reaction videos, uh, and then you've got <clears throat> lots of um, videos where people are saying, uh, talking about the lyrics in one way or another. What I wanted to hone in on was what I noticed from his live performances uh, was kind of the, the money, sh the money shot, if you will. The, the, this, the, the lyrics that really uh, brought the message home and, and got the crowd really roused. And it's, it's really very interesting when you think about it, when you, when you scrutinize it, when you look at it closely um, uh, and take into consideration certain things, which I'm going to uh, here in a minute. So, you know, there, there's, there's lots of lines that people remember about the song now, uh, the, you know, working, all, working uh, hours for bullshit pay, uh, and, and uh, so I can drag myself home, drink my troubles away, you know, the, that, that kind of, uh, that depiction of, uh, you know, the working man's desperate life just barely uh, staying afloat. Uh, and and, and uh, uh, disconcerted with the state of the country, the state of the world around him, 
and um, and so forth. And so it, it you know it, it it almost becomes this like it, there's a danger of it becoming like a like a sad sack kind of song, like a woe is me kind of song. Uh, but it's not. It's clearly not just that. Um, it's you know it's it's a, a song that channels the anger felt by by tons and tons of people, by millions of people, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to hazard to say. Um, and I think that it cuts across racial lines. It, it, you know, it, it, uh, and it's not just, it's not just reaching, you know, uh, uh, working class folks in Appalachia and, and the South. Uh, it's reaching a lot of people. Um, and, uh, like, <laughs> That that song, uh, like I said, well, it's all, it's 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 number one. That speaks for itself. He's got some other songs that are also charting, you know. That without again, without having a label, without uh, being attached to uh, to any, you know, typical um, you know promotion uh, vehicle, uh, you know, some some uh, some moneyed uh, record company. Um, so it's it's reaching people, and I think. Uh, it's it's interesting to note the lo- at least judging from the, the couple of live performances that I've seen you know on on video um, uh, there's a, one line in particular uh, <clears throat> that just gets the crowd really hooting and hollering um, and I'll try to find. Uh, I'll try to find a, a link to uh, this live perf- one of those live performances, so you can see it for yourself. So, as I was saying before, there are a lot of lyrics in the song that stand out. Um, you know, there's the, the my personal favorite, of course, is the the uh, I wish I wish politicians cared cared about minors, m i n e r. S and not and not just about minors and my N O R S on some island, reference to Epstein Island. Of course, some of the stupid uh, neoliberal types, you know, uh, hear that line uh, and the, and they think, oh, QAnon, QAnon alert. No, it's not about QAnon, you idiots. It's about Epstein, which is not QAnon. It's about Jeffrey Epstein and and. Uh, uh, Elaine Maxwell, uh, and that has been, you know, that's, that's, that's been on all the major mainstream news sources that you can name. Okay. So, so don't, don't come at me with this. Oh, it's just a dog whistle to QAnon crap. All right. It's not, it's not. And (laughs) of course, so much of the, uh, the whiny neoliberal uh, uh, lefty types. So much of the uh, of of their uh, angry critiques of things is, is saying, "Oh, that's a dog whistle. Oh, that's if you listen to this, you, that that's going to send you down the pipeline to the alt right." Um, they, they say they use those ter- those two words, and I think I've talked about this before. Um, I don't know what they would do without those two words, without dog whistle. And pipeline, right? And they're very useful because when you say this is a dog whistle, what you're what that that that's that's useful when somebody, you know, just says X in a song, and then you can just feel free to say, oh well, they're only saying X, but they're really meaning it's a dog whistle to what they really mean, which is. Uh, this nefarious thing that, that, uh, you know, I, I believe it means. <laughs> so, um, uh, so that's, that's what they mean when they talk about dog whistling. So, uh, so a reference to Epstein and, and mainstream politicians being, being in, involved and entangled with Epstein, which is truthful. It's factual. It's, uh, it's not just rumor. It's not just, it's not conspiracy theory. Okay. But anyway, I got off course there for a second. Um, so the, the, the line about the, the the reference to Epstein Island, and the and the, the line about uh, you know the o, the obese uh, you know milking welfare and, and wolfing down fudge rounds 
<laughs> is is kind of a fun it's kind of funny um i don't know if it's intended to be funny but it's you know in the middle of this deeply wounded protest song he's talking about all these was all these all these fatzos out there <laughs> using their welfare money to buy fudge rounds <laughs> it's that's kind of uh, kind of amusing but here's the line that really uh just knocks them on their ass you know uh, in, when, when you see it performed live. It's the line that, that follows the Fudge Rounds reference. And it, and it goes, uh, Young men are putting themselves six feet in the ground because all this damn country does is keep on kicking them down. And people go, Yeah! Woo! Uh, you know, and like the, the cheer goes up in response to those lines, that, that couplet. Now, let's just break that down, break those lines down for, for a second, because there are a few things that are interesting here. Um, the young men are putting themselves six feet in the ground. I mean, it's a reference to male suicide, obviously, um, which is, you know, the numbers speak for themselves. Male suicide dwarves that of female suicide, although uh, there are more female attempts at suicide, uh, which might just be ultimately, you know, half-hearted attempts that are really cries for help. Uh, there are more men who just take themselves out. Um, and it's not really something, because it's about men, uh, especially, you know, white men doing this, then, then, then you're not supposed to care about it. You're supposed to just, just, uh, just sniff your, sniff up, sniff your nose at it. Um, if you're, you know, into the, uh, the kind of, uh, frou-frou kind of causes of the, of the, uh, of the modern left, the, the neoliberal left, uh, if it's not about, uh, sexual deviancy, uh, in some way, then, then they don't really care that much about it or feminism. Uh, but if it's just about straight men, uh, offing themselves, uh, because they're unhappy, because they're desperate, because they're, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, addicted to oxy, uh, uh, because of their, you know, the, the lives that they've, they've led, um, they don't care about that. Um, and so he's asserting, he's saying, we need to remember these men, uh, and what, uh, what's been done to them to make them do this to themselves, to make them, uh, put, put themselves six feet on the ground. And then the, the really extraordinary line is what comes next. It's, uh, he says, but all, cause all this damn country does is keep on kicking them down. Now, I think that <clears throat> maybe even five years ago or, or certainly 10 years ago and definitely 20 years ago, I don't think you would have heard any country flavored artist say all this damn country does. Uh, you know, to, to refer to the United States of America as, as this damn country, um, that would be like, Hey boy, Hey now, Hey now, uh, you better respect the, the United States of America. That's the, this is the best country in the world. Uh, this is the red, white, and blue, you know, and there's still, there's still plenty of that kind of, uh, you know, wrapping yourself in the flag kind of, uh, kind of stuff that happens, uh, <clears throat> amongst that certain class of people, uh, you know, it's, it's never been something I've, that's, that it's particularly resonated with me. Um, but for a lot of people, it's, it's like, you know, um, it's like a way of defining themselves that, that, uh, sets them apart from the, the liberals, the liberal types who are always putting the country down. But in this case, I think we, we have somebody who represents the demographic of what would typically be the patriotard. I'm not using that word. I'm putting it in quotes. What's what, you know, some would call the patriotard, uh, kind of, uh, you know, <laughs> brought to you courtesy of the red, white, and blue by Toby Keith, that kind of stuff. Um, he says that all this damn country does is keep on kicking them down, kicking the, kicking these men down. Roar, cheer, you know, it resonates with people. People hear that and they're like, yeah, I'm tired of being kicked down. 
I'm tired of it. I'm damn tired of it, you know? And, and what, what is, and it's the whole, it's the country that's doing it. The country is blamed for it. The, the, uh, the powers that be, the rich men north of Richmond, um, are responsible for this or fomenting this, this trend of, uh, you know, this, this, uh, this, um, trend of being, being, uh, down on men or, or dismissive of, of men's problems or, you know, just sort of like the, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, kind of, kind of at this callous kind of attitude, man up, you know, this, the, that whole, that whole thing, you know, men, the, the men who are in this crowd, I'm, you know, they're, they, I, I think they're the type of men who think of themselves as, as masculine, who would, who would think of themselves as, yeah, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to man up. I'm tough. I'm, I'm going to try to be tough anyway. You know, I, I, uh, that's, that's what I look up to. That's, that's what I see as a virtue is, uh, you know, the, the masculine ideal. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but yet at the same time, they're, they're aware that they're, they're getting kicked, kicked down a lot. And that's what is making people you know, go ape shit at, at his shows. This, that's the line more than any other line in his song that is, that is getting these cheers. And it, it, it's kind of, it's a little weird that people are cheering that line because it's a sad line. Uh, but it, uh, you know, the, 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 part, the line about men putting themselves six feet in the ground is sad, but the, the anger that is expressed, you know, the, like this, this sort of haughty, uh, the anger towards this haughty attitude, uh, towards the, especially the working man, um, and, and his, his problems and, and the, the way in which, you know, uh, the, the working man is, is just, is just dismissed, uh, and, uh, you know, or, or, or called misogynistic or, or accused of, of having all of these, um, you know, uh, of, of embodying all these terrible things. They're tired of it. Men, these men at the shows and men everywhere uh, are tired of being kicked down. Um, and it's the damn country that's doing it. He, he, blame, he points his finger at the damn, all this damn country, meaning the United States, right, is, is doing it. He, he's holding America accountable for what, what it's doing uh, to to these young men who are uh, taking themselves out, putting themselves six feet under the ground. So that's, that's really interesting to me that that represents a sort of transition from where, where we were not that long ago. And in some ways where we still are, you know, but, <laughs> but I don't know. I, I think that even among the, the working class, you know, flag, flag waving types, um, and I, and you know, all Oliver Anthony has the American flag up at his shows and, uh, but a line like that really, again, displays how the mentality is changing, how, how people's anger and resentment, um, is, you know, taking, taking this shift, you know, where they're, they're going to say what, what it would formerly have been almost blasphemy, you know, amongst this particular demographic, um, this damn country, all this damn country does is keep on kicking them down. Anyway, I just thought that was interesting. Uh, I'll leave a link below, uh, so you can watch for yourself and see the kind of response that, uh, that line, uh, gets from the crowd and, uh, leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.